he has been very productive and very important in terms of uh, the progress of this field. The field has moved tremendously in, in 25 years, largely because of the early seminal work of Yuji Matsuzawa and his team. And in particular, his work with adiponectin has really changed the way that we think about the relationship of obesity, abdominal obesity, and cardiovascular disease. At that time, I noticed that the very severe obesity has no uh, metabolic uh, disease. The extent of uh, body fat okay. uh, that was not a determinant, but uh, fat distribution may be the more important. Okay. That was uh, my uh, uh, starting. Yuji Matsuzawa received the 2008 Per Bjorntorp Jean Vague Lecture Award for his contributions to enhancing our understanding of the role of adipose tissue in disease. We recognize individuals who get this award because of their contribution to helping us understand not only what the reason for the association is, but potential ways of intervening and potential new therapies. So of all of the people in the world who deserve this particular award, Dr. Matsuzawa is right up amongst the top and uh, it gave me great pleasure to be one of the people who decided he should get this award. The International Chair on Cardiometabolic Risk created the Per Bjorntorp Jean Vague Lecture Award to pay tribute to these two pioneers in the field of abdominal obesity. After the Second World War, Jean Vague was the first to point out the importance of two different patterns of body fat distribution, for which he coined the terms android and gynoid obesity. Forty years later, Per Bjorntorp reported the results of the first prospective studies showing that abdominal obesity, as measured by the waist-to-hip ratio, was predicative of an increased risk of coronary disease and diabetes in both men and women. Over the last 35 years, I've watched his major contribution in many areas of atherosclerosis. It started off with his understanding of the cholesterol ester transfer protein, how that may relate to cardiovascular disease, He's not only made major contributions himself, but he's trained a number of other people who've carried on his work. But since then, he continually reinvents himself and makes new discoveries. And his discovery of the, com the compounds that are released from adipose tissue, and in particular his work with adiponectin, has really changed the way that we think about the relationship of obesity, abdominal obesity, and cardiovascular disease. His contribution has been enormous. When asked to highlight his most important contributions, Yuji Matsuzawa named two, the discovery of adiponectin in the 1990s and his earlier studies of intra-abdominal or visceral fat using computed tomography. Jean-Pierre Desprez, Philip Barter and Ulf Smith shared their personal perspectives on those contributions. I mean, in the early 80s, he was really uh, among the group of investigators in Osaka, Japan, documenting that you could use an, an imaging technique, computed tomography, to measure the amount of abdominal fat. And they discovered that those who had an excess of intra-abdominal fat, even if they were not necessarily markedly overweight, they had a pretty disturbed uh, metabolic risk profile. So that w it was 25 years ahead of everybody. Obviously, the, that was early evidence, and it was received with a lot of uh, skepticism early. But in the mid-80s, at the same time, I was beginning some investigations on this topic at Université Laval. And that early work has been a tremendous source of, of inspiration for me. That really began the modern era of understanding how where the fat is influences disease rather than just the amount of fat. It was the beginning of something that's been now taken up by many, many researchers around the world. It had a huge impact. The major effect that uh, Yuji's publications have had on, on my way of thinking and my work relates to the relationship of visceral obesity, visceral adipose tissue, 
and its effect on lipoproteins. My major interest is high density lipoproteins and what they uh, usually has done is provide a link between adipose tissue and HDL cholesterol. We know people with obesity have a low level of HDL. We know that contributes to the risk. We also know that adiponectin raises HDL and adiponectin is low in people with visceral obesity. That has had a major impact on my work. I think the major contributions are the um, adiponectin and then the visfatin. I knew proteins or molecules secreted by the adipose tissue and then doing a lot of work to uh, identify how they work and what is the clinical importance etc. And in fact I think he's been able to provide us with important links between the visceral fat and the uh, various complications that we see. What is really impressive about Eugene Matusavois' work is the scope of his contribution. Clearly one part, uh, part of the contribution was really to document with imaging data that if you put on visceral fat then you develop metabolic abnormalities. Hypertension, risk factors for cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes, pro-inflammatory, pro-thrombotic profile. So that's, that's really, I would say, one third of his major contribution. Another third of his contribution, in my opinion, is his remarkable um, basic research work looking at the effects of potential mediators of you know, an altered body fat distribution profile, looking, for instance, at the atherosclerotic plaque, the animal models that he has developed to make the link between body fat distribution, metabolic abnormalities, and development of, of uh, complications. And among those uh, mechanistic studies, came this remarkable discovery, the discovery of this adipose tissue specific protein, which was named adiponectin. And then his team has contributed to a plethora of very interesting papers uh, to this uh, literature on adiponectin. The biggest contribution of anyone who does basic research is if it ultimately translates into clinical management. What Dr. Matsuzawa's work has done is to say, Yes, we can relate the visceral adiposity to disease. We therefore should be targeting the visceral adiposity. And before we can do that, we need to understand how to measure it, why it's related, and how it should be targeted. Yes, now people are measuring visceral adiposity by using the tape measure. They're measuring it by more sophisticated imaging techniques. This is the real world, this is clinical practice, and I really do think we have Yuji Matazawa to thank for much of where we're going now.